Hey seventh graders, today's lesson is 3.1 natural selection. Your learning targets for today, I can describe how mutations can arise in genetic material causing new traits to form that could be adaptive or non-adaptive. So way back in our first chapter of this unit, we started looking at some histograms and seeing how those histograms change over maybe like 50 generations. And what you guys will see is that sometimes there wasn't traits in your original histogram that now are present in, you know, your 50 years later histogram. Um, and your question might arise, where do those traits come from? And now you guys are gonna kind of be able to dig into that answer a little bit more when we start looking at mutations, okay? So today, first thing you need to do is add to your OneNote. So open that up and add mutation to your vocab. So mutation is a random change to a gene that sometimes results in a new trait. So what you guys need to understand is because we're constantly making new cells in our body or any other organism is constantly making new cells for a lot of different reasons. Um, every time they do that, they have to copy their DNA. And just about every time we copy our DNA, something doesn't get copied correctly and that can cause a mutation. More often than not, we don't even see these mutations. They don't affect us. They don't change anything. They might even be in parts of our DNA that we don't even use, okay? So more often than not, mutations don't show up as anything, but occasionally mutations can show up as something bad, like a disease, or it could show up as something good, like possibly a new trait that could be more adaptive to our environment. So that's kind of what we're gonna focus on in this lesson. All right, let's move on to our activity to warm up. Okay, so what you guys will see here is three histograms. Uh, you notice this first one is 200 generations ago. Again, I can't stress this enough. 200 generations is not 200 years. Okay, obviously, if you guys look a little closer, you'll see we're talking about our poisonous news that we've been focusing on for this whole unit. So 200 generations ago, you guys can see we had our highest level of poisons and newts was actually are very low poison, and we didn't have any individuals that had a 10 poison level, okay? Our environment at that time, we had no snakes existing with these newts, okay? Then 50 generations ago, you guys saw, again, still no snakes, but all of a sudden, look, we have this poison level 10, so where did that come from, okay? And then as we shift into adding snakes into our environment, we now have a predator. We can see a complete shift in our variation and our distribution of this poison level in our newt. So we don't even have poison levels one, two, and three anymore. But now we have this high level of 10 that didn't even exist 200 generations ago, okay? So looking at your warm-up questions, how did the distribution of the poison level traits change from 200 generations ago to 50 generations ago? So you guys are comparing this histogram to this histogram. How did this one change compared to this one? Okay, and what could explain this change? Record any ideas that you have. So look at what's different and then give me some thoughts on why you think that's different, okay? All right, moving on to our activity three. You guys have a little reading to do. So you guys will see in this article right here, if you guys go ahead and right click, open that link up, you're gonna go into this article here. You guys have an introduction, which is called movie mutations, and then you have three different organisms to read about. So Revenge of the Bed Bugs, Cane Toad Invaders, and Red Lobster, Blue Lobster. I'm gonna go ahead and read the introduction to you guys, and then you guys will choose either Revenge of the Bed Bugs, Cane Toad Invaders, or red lobster, blue lobster to read additionally, and that will be the article you answer your questions on the next slide on, okay? Make sure you guys circle which article you chose to read. All right, so let's take a look at that introduction. In movies, mutations are always exciting. They might give someone special powers or extra limbs. However, real mutations can be very boring. They might not have any noticeable effect at all. What is a mutation anyway? The answer has to do with genes and the way they are passed down when organisms reproduce. So caption here, in movies and comic books, mutations make people into superheroes. In the real world, mutations often have no visible effect. Boring. All right, genes are instructions for making a protein molecule, and those protein molecules determine an organism's traits. So we've talked about this a lot, how um, it's not our DNA that makes our eyes brown, it's actually the proteins um, in our eyes that are brown. Um, we get the instruction to make those proteins from our DNA. When organisms reproduce, they pass down copies of genes to their offspring. However, the copies aren't always perfect. 
As genes are duplicated, changes can occur. These changes are called mutations, and they can be passed from parent to offspring when organisms reproduce. Most of the changes are minor and don't affect traits at all. But every once in a while, mutated genes give instructions to make a new protein molecule that leads to a new trait in the offspring. The new traits that arise from mutations may be adaptive or non-adaptive, or they may have no effect on survival and reproduction. It all depends on the organism's environment. If a new trait makes organisms less likely to survive and reproduce in their environment, the trait is non-adaptive. Organisms born with that trait don't have a very good chance of surviving long enough to reproduce and pass their mutated gene down to the next generation. If they don't pass the mutated gene down, they don't pass the new trait down either. Mutated traits that are non-adaptive usually remain uncommon in the population. On the other hand, mutated genes sometimes result in a new trait that turns out to be adaptive. Adaptive traits help organisms survive and reproduce in their environments. If a mutation results in an adaptive trait, organisms with that trait are more likely to reproduce and pass on their mutated genes to the next generation. Through natural selection, adaptive traits become more and more common in the population over time. A trait that is adaptive in one environment may be non-adaptive in another, and that's what makes mutations so important. Environments don't stay the same forever. Mutations can introduce new traits, increasing the chance that one of those traits might help make a population better able to adapt to a changing environment. To learn more about mutations, you can explore one or more of the following chapters. So again, you guys are going to choose either Revenge of the Bedbugs, Cane Toad Invaders, or Red Lobster, Blue Lobster. Circle which one you chose here. Go ahead and read that and then answer these three questions. Did this population change? Okay. What was the cause? And then what was the effect? Okay, moving on to our last activity for today. A little simulation for you. So to start off, you guys are going to look at these two histograms here. So these two histograms show the initial distribution of fur traits in two populations. So we're looking at population A and population B um, from an earlier sim activity. So you guys might remember way back where you guys had to choose temperature effects for population A and population B. In both cases, the Australopes environment became much colder and the populations did not experience any mutations. Label each histogram with one or the two labels. So what that means is when our environment became colder and we didn't experience any mutations, if we look at population A, it didn't have for length traits 8, 9, and 10. Population B didn't have 3 through 10, okay? 50 generations later, we didn't see any 8, 9, and 10, and we didn't see any 3 through 10, okay? So we didn't have any new traits for a longer fur coat pop up. Um, in these two generations because there was no mutations. So label each histogram with one of the two labels below to show what happened to these populations. You can review the activity in lesson 1.4 if needed, then follow the instructions below the histogram. So you have these two labels here that you guys can click and drag to either one of those boxes. So pick which one is correct and then drag it to the correct spot on those graphs. This one reads, this population survived and traits uh, for more fur became more common. Uh, this one was this population died out because it did not have the fur traits needed to survive. So pick which one these two go to. Remember, both of these populations were exposed to a much colder environment. All right. Moving on, you guys have a couple more predictions, and then we'll move into the sim. You will be completing another sim activity where you make the environment of population B much colder. However, this time the Osterlope population will experience mutation. So if you guys remember what we saw with this, and a lot of you guys made some predictions that there would be a lot more of those higher fur tra traits, but with this not having any mutations, we just found out that that population couldn't survive and reproduce in that cold environment, and they all died out, okay? So however, this time the Osterlope population will experience mutations. So now with our new sim, we're going to be able to experience mutations and see what that looks like. That can cause new traits to appear in the population. What do you think will happen to population B when they can experience mutations, and when their environment gets colder. Use what you know about adaptive traits, environments, and mutations to make a prediction. So right here, go ahead and make your prediction. Okay, and let's move on and look at how you're gonna run this sim. So here's your sim link right here. You guys can go ahead and right click that to open it. Your sim again looks like this. It's gonna pop up here in a second. And then if we read our directions, open the natural selection simulation. Uh, and go to mutations introduction. 
So we'll let this run here, click on these three horizontal bars, find mutations introductions, and hit yes. Okay, change the temperature of the environment to cold. So you're gonna switch that down to level one. By moving the temperature slider, you guys are gonna, again, be looking at population B. It's already loaded in there for you when you lo loaded this mode. Turn Osterlope fur trait mutations on by pressing the Osterlope icon and then pressing the mutations toggle. So we're gonna go ahead, go temperature cold, Osterlope population. We're gonna make sure this is toggled on. So include Osterlopes. Okay, and then our mutations toggle is now on. Okay, so this is the toggle they're talking about in that direction. Okay, and then press run and observe for at least 70 generations. So that is quite a bit longer. Thing is, is we've been looking at either 25 or 50 from this point, but it may take more than that for any mutations to occur at all. Okay, and then analyze and compare your starting and ending histogram. So you'll let it run, you'll speed it up. Uh, I'm just gonna let it go for a couple generations and then I'm gonna show you guys what you should be screenshotting as if you guys don't already know. So I'll pause it, hit analyze. Remember that we can drag this slider back to see our beginning histogram where our blue line matches our little diagonal gray lines. And then I only ran it for six generations. You guys will need to run it clear to 70. You guys will see, all right, this is what happens to our population now, okay? Our population for these one and two fur traits has gone down quite a bit. Okay, so that's just after six generations. We'll see what happens after 70. Okay, so you guys will screenshot this right here. Okay, uh, reminder on screenshotting, you guys will need to screenshot it. So if you're using a Chromebook, hit Control Shift, and then the key above the six, click and drag to just get this little histogram part right here. Okay, you don't need the full screen. And then you guys can paste that in, hit capture. It'll already copy for you guys and then paste your histogram in right there. If you're using something other than a Chromebook, use the snipping tool. So search for snipping tool, click new, click and drag, copy, control C, and paste control V right here. And then finally, based on your histograms that you see, answer these questions. Which fur trait was most common in the population at generation 70? So circle the correct one. There's only one answer there. It's asking for the most common. Was that trait present in the starting Osterlope population? So if you look back at your beginning histogram from 70 generations earlier, was that trait there? Okay, this population died out when there was no mutations. That was what we found out in 1.4. How did having mutations allow the population to survive the environmental change? So explain your answer there, okay? That completes your guys' assignment for today. Go ahead and do your wrap-up. Do you have any questions? Circle yes or no. If you have any questions, type them below, and then circle four, three, two, one. How do you think you did? Don't be blue. There will be more assignments this year still, but don't forget to hand this one in, and I hope you all are having a great day. Bye.